brother? Brother Shiro? Sachiko. I'm finally home, big brother. Welcome back. I'm glad you're safe. Moad is as beautiful as ever today. I'll make sure it stays that way for a long time, brother. Zero, don't leave me! Well, that's it. Everyone dies someday. That's the price you pay for living. Shiro Tokusara. However, we are still uncertain as to what happened to Jinohara. Still, the results of the air raid were astounding. We reached targets more than 500 meters below the surface. Not only did we destroy Shiro Tokusara's army, we also wiped out rebellion army hideouts scattered across the planet. Currently, the ground troops are performing a sweep operation. They are arresting survivors and destroying remaining facilities. Prepare for a special broadcast on the Federation channel. I'm planning to make an official announcement to the entire Federation. Come on out! We won't attack anyone who doesn't resist! Go to hell, you This is a special broadcast of the Federation channel. We now bring you an important announcement from the President regarding MOAD. Hello, good ladies and gentlemen. I am so pleased to inform you that the Moad conflict is over. Every last member of the Moad civilian movement left the planet with smiles on their faces. Therefore, I'm happy to announce that the great space show of 4701 will commence according to plan. It will be the Big Bang of the century. It's the universe's first planetary destruction at the hands of man. This historical event is a great way to usher in the new century. Although it takes place in the distant Kashmir Nebula, we will provide a complete and comprehensive broadcast for your viewing pleasure. Once again, proving the Federation government's superior technology and wealth to the entire universe. I am confident that this grand experiment will satisfy everyone. The Federation government is always working hard to better your lives, so please give us your support. Here's to a bright future. Viva the Federation! The hell does Viva the Federation mean? Uh, <laughs> Don't take it out on me, amigo. I just can't believe they're calling this a great space show. It's all peacefully my ass. That bastard! Ooh, now that was unexpectedly soft. <laughs> How's she be? Not good. Her fever isn't going down at all. She seems to be having a nightmare. Could you get Duck for me? Yeah, sure thing, Captain. I understand, Lucky. He really loved your big brother, didn't he? Twill be all right. You sleep all you want. I want you to rest until you're well enough to shout, Captain, Captain. Until then, I'll watch over you, no matter what happens. Captain, 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 Captain! Captain, Captain. Are you trying to piss me off? Captain Tag! Uh, tag me! I'll teach you, you the stuff that comes to respect your How's she doing there, Duck? Well, when someone suffers such a huge shock, anything can happen. In this case, only Lucky's mental strength and time will determine if there's any hope for recovery. 
But it's looking good. Her heartbeat is stabilizing. Captain Ahab! The enemy's on top of us! You're gonna have to get out of here, now! We'll stay behind and try to buy you a little time! Now get out while you still can! What do you see? Captain Ahab, I leave everything here on Moad in the hands of you and your crew. Lucky, eh? I pray that you will be able to defeat Moby Dick and save this planet from destruction. May the divine protection of the universe be upon you and your whale hunters. I understand thee, Lucky's brother. After all, that's what we're here for. Don't you worry, we'll get her done. I'm taking Lucky with me, all right? It's purely up to you, Captain. All right, me hearties, let's go! Yeah. You come too, okay? Oh yeah, let's go! Let's go, dude! Where would you like to go this evening? You know where. Over there. Yes, sir, over there. Over there, he says, but it's neither here nor there, and it's not nowhere. Thinking about where's where's just weighing on my head. He's talking about the West Shore. That's where Lady Whiskers stayed, you idiot. This is bad. That's me. What's wrong? Please help me. I'm begging you. This way. to do some blood tests. Blood test! Blood test! Blood Shut test! up! <laughs> Her lungs seem to be shot. Mohad's air didn't agree with me. I never should have come here to this place. Well, no. Actually, it looks like your lungs must have been damaged long before you came here. O'Hara, you were born and raised on planet Earth, weren't you? Yes, it looks as if the Earth's over-polluted atmosphere is the culprit here. If I had to make a guess, I'd say that coming to planet Moad and breathing in the clean air probably caused your immune system's failure. <laughs> so you're trying to say that an Earthling like me can only live in a polluted atmosphere? Beats me. People react to things with different symptoms. <laughs> My lungs. How long will they last, Doc? How much longer? I can take the news! Spit it out! They're way past their limit already. <gasps> Thank you, Doctor. Madam O'Hara. Huh? Do you guys hear a weird noise? Yeah, I do. <gasps> hey, dude, what's going on? The fated day draws nearer with every tick of the clock. 239 hours, 59 minutes, 46 seconds, 44 seconds. The countdown has begun. Detonation in T-minus 9 days, 23 hours, 59 minutes, 35 seconds, Moed time. 30 seconds, 28 seconds, 26 seconds, 24 seconds. Of course, we didn't know this at the time. 
But on the same day that the countdown began, the Federation Army's 7th Fleet withdrew. And suddenly, everything on Moad was quiet. The only remaining people on the planet were a few hundred citizens who had survived the attacks from the Federation forces. And us. Other than that, there was only the planet destroyer cannon, Moby Dick. Good. The fever's gone down. Well, are you starting to feel a little bit better now, Lucky? Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot, Doc. Thanks, Ducky. I have two new patients to take care of all of a sudden. You're working me too hard. <sighs> you can let me die. You can't save me anyway. Don't say that. This treatment should help make breathing easier for now, at least. Ahab, Ishmael, Ali. Yeah. I hear that you're going to defeat Moby Dick. I. How? That be no business of yours now. I used to work in the central nerve center of the Federation government. I probably know more about Moby Dick than you do. I want to make sure this bomb detonation plan fails. I want to make those bastards panic. Hey. Oh. You know that Moby Dick is an android, right? Moby Dick was originally a death row inmate. He was a physicist who worked for the government before he was convicted of treason. Have you ever heard of a man named Professor Abel Kane? I don't know no intellectuals. Abel Kane? Wasn't he the dean of the Federation Science Academy 25 years ago? That's right. And he just happens to be the man who invented the planet destroyer cannon. Although it was his creation, Kane was concerned about its potential impact on the universe. So he appealed to the government to ban manufacturing or use of the weapon. He even tried to leak information to the media before he was arrested by the secret police. He was sentenced to death in a closed-door trial and turned into an android within the same day. So the poor blackguard was turned into Moby Dick. And split in two. In two? Yes, the professor's consciousness was divided in two. As a result, his identity was erased and his memories were lost forever. Half of him became a battleship that defended the Federated space. Aye, that's when I first met him. I lost me left eye and left leg to him back then. His other half was a man-shaped android assigned to the Bureau of Planetary Development. Soon, the planet destroyer cannon was completed and Moad was set as its target. The Moby Dick was modified to become the new model cannon, and its other half was given the task of being its detonator. <coughs> what did you say? You mean you and Moby Dick were started out as the same person? Exactly. The real irony is that day the planet destroyer cannon is used for the first time will be the day of Professor Abel Kane's execution, his final mission. This tasteless scenario is the best that the incompetent and corrupt Federation government can come up with. <laughs> I was involved in that project myself not too long ago. <laughs> So now what? How do we save Moab and beat Moby Dick? What's your plan? Hey, don't leave me hanging like this. Come on, say it, O'Hara. Spit it out. You're almost there. O'Hara. Oh. She's dead! She's dead! She's dead! She's dead! Madam O'Hara. After that, no one said a word. We just packed up and headed to the west shore. Du and Sarah followed not too far behind us. And far, far behind them was Murato. gathered scrap metal from the beach and made a makeshift raft. It may have been kind of sloppy, but it was the only way we could get to Lady Whisker, which had sunk offshore. And then, suddenly, Ahab said, anyway... Anyway, all this here hard work be making me hungry. Okay, coming right up! <laughs> all right, make sure you only eat the green seaweed, okay? The black seaweed is a big no-no. Why? Does something bad happen if you eat it? It gives you really bad diarrhea. Oh, oh, okay, hold it. Oh, 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 oh. Are you leaving her behind?
around. I've run out of time, and this is a good place to lay her to rest. Does this mean that you have already given up hope that you can revive her life program? If Moad is saved and I do somehow manage to survive, then I will come back here. But there is virtually no chance of that. Wait a moment, dude. It's impossible to return her to how she was, but I may be able to revive her life circuit. When I was a border garrison commander, there were a number of times that I revived labor androids whose life program had been terminated. I should be able to perform a similar procedure on Sarah. Coming back. The wave will be Dick Bane brought the lady up from the bottom of the sea. I couldn't believe it. But at the same time, it seemed like Moby Dick did it on purpose. He was challenging us. Come on, fools, catch me if you can. Come chase me to the end of the universe. As we stood on the beach, it was as if the white demon was whispering those words into our ears. I'm 